This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. This $36 million facility and program is something we can all be proud of, stand up for, and look to for inspiration for the truly wonderful things that we can achieve working together. Another step taken toward the opening of the National Flight Academy at NAS Pensacola, the ceremonial laying of the keel for the mock aircraft carrier at the heart of NFA. If things go according to plan, High school and middle school children from around the country will be spending about six days living and learning about aviation, seeing from the controls of a simulated cockpit how math, engineering, technology, science are not just egghead skills, but the nuts and bolts of flight. Good evening, welcome to CTC, I'm Lloyd Patterson. The Cradle of Naval Aviation is about to add another flight attraction, the National Flight Academy, right next to the Naval Aviation Museum. Retired Vice Admiral Gerald Hoeing is the President and CEO of the Naval Aviation Museum Foundation, overseeing the NFA. Now, Admiral Hoeing has many years of aircraft carrier experience, and his last active duty post was at uh, Washington, D.C as the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Manpower Personnel Training and Education. Retired Navy Lieutenant Commander Kevin King also served his final tour at NAS Pensacola, where he served as a director of the Aviation Survival uh, School. He's now Vice President of the National Flight Academy. And Aaron West serves as Vice President of Development for both the Naval Aviation Museum Foundation and the National Flight Academy. He's a former development director for the United Way of Escambia County. Now development, in the, when we're talking about in this sense, is all about raising money, and that's going to be something that it's going to take a lot of to get this going. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Thanks for having me. Thank, thank, you. thank you for being here. Admiral Hoeing, how's it going with uh, raising of the money? I know it's a lot of dollars you're talking about. Well, the National Flight Academy, our goal is to have the National Flight Academy to become the world's best aviation-inspired learning experience. And it takes some money to do that. Uh, I have some really good news to report in this arena, and that is that uh, over the years, uh, since we started this concept from several years ago, uh, we have raised the funds for the construction of the National Flight Academy. It's a $26.5 million construction program. Those funds have been raised. Now we're wow. in the next campaign to raise the dollars to make it the world's best aviation-inspired learning experience, and that's a, a, a $10 million campaign. Uh, Aaron West is the person in charge of that campaign, and we're making some progress that so way. So here you're talking about uh, Admiral and and Aaron, you're talking about not the money that, the money is set to put the building up, to finish the building, but you're talking about buying all the things that's going, that are going to make it a special place, the simulators, whatever. Is that, is that what you're talking about with the 10 million? Yeah, that, that's right, Lloyd. Uh, as the Admiral said, the great part of this campaign is that the, out, is that the construction part is complete as far as the fundraising part goes. So a great part of our story is that we don't have to go out to anyone and ask for dollars for brick and mortar. So what we have now is a $10 million campaign that, that, that really focuses on the outfitting and the startup, which is the simulators, which is the outfitting, which is the, the experience that the, uh, the teens coming in or the, the participants coming in actually experience once they get inside of the building. It's about a $10 million uh, outfitting and startup budget or projected budget. And uh, against that right now, we've raised about three and a half million and we expect uh, within the next couple of months that we have, you know, the the anticipation of more major gifts coming in that we can announce as well. So. Oh, that'll be that'll be great, and it's got to be a tough environment for going out and asking companies, uh, foundations, for money right now with the economy being a, a little bit weak. The the uh, environment is uh, is tough when you look at individ in individuals, but I think what we have here is a fantastic program, and and what we've really seen is as we've gone out. 
uh, especially to the corporate community. The corporate, you know, many of the corporate community partners that we have have missions, have, have uh, mission statements that they want to enhance the science, technology, engineering, and math education component also of the nation. And so it's been a great sell for us, and we've got a, we've got a great program going on, and uh, it's not been as hard as you might think it was on the corporate side. Okay, now enough about the money for right now, because that's good. Uh, let, let's, let's talk about the glamorous part of this, and as, just in a second here, we're going to see that ceremonial uh, attachment of the keel. This, this facility doesn't look like anything like an aircraft carrier, does it, Admiral Owing? I mean, you've gone on a lot of aircraft carriers. No, it's, it's not an aircraft carrier yet, and as, as our speaker said at the ceremony, this, uh, this ship isn't going to get underway, you know, but it is going to deliver a capability that is just like a ship, and that's teamwork and a learning environment. And the laying of the keel, which is what is coming up on, on the video, what is that, what's, so, what's special about that in the life of a ship in the Navy? Well, there's a, a whole series of events, and I think what I'm going to do is let, uh, let Kevin address the series of events that okay. we will have that will bring it to life just like a ship. Well, <laughs> absolutely, Admiral. We, we actually are treating the National Flight Academy just like we would do in the Navy if we were constructing a ship, and, and there are four ceremonial um, marks that you celebrate in the life or the birth of a ship. The first is a keeling, and it traces back to the first ship the United States Navy built. We just had that uh, ceremony. Uh, two weeks right. ago. That's what we're looking at right now. They took a plaque and they're going, they're, they're welding that to? The keel of the ship. In this case, right. it's actually our steel columns and beams that, that form the backbone of, of our ship. Uh, in November, we will do a ship naming ceremony where we unveil the name of the ship, and unfortunately I can't do that yet here. Uh, <laughs> we have a, a board to go through and a big ceremony that we'll roll out as part of our homecoming weekend, our homecoming air show weekend. Uh, November 12th through the 15th. That's Next, good, that's a good idea because you want to keep, you want to have events that keep public attention focused Absolutely. On, this, Absolutely. on this thing, don't Th you? This is a huge thing being built right here in our backyard, and, and the name is the National Flight Academy. It's not the Pensacola, it's not the Navy. This is national in scale and scope. You heard the Admiral use the words world's best. Uh, how often do you hear something like that said? So we, uh, we approach it like that. Next May, we will have another major ceremony during what we call symposium at the uh, museum. Um, it, it is another big springtime period for us, and we will do a ceremony called Stepping the Mast. And for ships of old, we used to put a coin under the main mast of the ship, and it was traditionally to bring good luck uh, to the vessel. For an aircraft carrier, that's done when the, when the uh, island, the tower structure, is actually placed on the ship. We will do that here with a mock tower we have on our facility. Next November, we'll be christening and launching. That's the ceremony everybody knows about where the, the female sponsor swings the bottle of champagne into the actual vessel. And then May of 2011, when we open, we will actually commission the vessel and have our first class start to the day 100 years from the start of naval aviation, the centennial of naval aviation. Wow. Well, if you just, if you just joined us here tonight on Connecting, uh, I'm Lloyd Patterson. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about the National Flight Academy, which is uh, under construction now out at uh, NAS Pensacola, right next to the Naval Aviation Museum, which is, of course, a world-class facility uh, by itself uh, up there, I, I think anyway, with Smithsonian quality displays. And b by being right next to the Aviation Museum, it sets a fairly high standard, I would say, for what people are going to expect of the National Flight Academy. Wouldn't you say, Admiral? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we have the uh, world's best Naval Aviation Museum. You know, I, uh, I, Bob Rasmussen, the director of uh, this museum, and I both agree that we're the only aviation museum that uh, gives the, our guests the opportunity to actually interact with the artifacts. You can reach up and touch Happy Boyington's F4U Corsair or David McCampbell's F6F Hellcat. You can't do that in most uh, most areas. So the interaction, uh, the opportunity to touch history is what specializes us in the aviation museum business. And it is a top quality operation and the National Flight Academy, how is it going to be linked to the Aviation Museum? Is there, there, there's got to be something working together there, isn't, isn't there? there? There is. The, uh, you know, first of all, we will use aviation as the teaching medium and the motivating force, if you will, for the students 
the student aviators that will come to the National Flight Academy. And we will use naval aviation as our brand. So when you walk on board our ship, you will do it by coming up the quarter deck, just like you do on a ship. Uh, it'll have the sounds, smells, uh, uh, all the uh, v visualized, just like an aircraft carrier, the students will eat on the mess decks, they'll stay in staterooms, they'll do their uh, uh, mission planning and, and mission briefings and aircraft carrier style ready rooms right down to the hangar bays with our simulators. Speaking of that, we have the artist renderings and we can show those and, the, and this is, look at what a beautiful facility this is going to be when it's finished. It doesn't look like an aircraft carrier, but that's not what's important. It's going to be what's on the inside, yeah. right? Now, the, the, uh, the building in the foreground that you're looking at here, that, that is the National Flight Academy building, the academic building, 102,000 square feet. Okay. Uh, the top two floors are where this, the students will live. Okay, this is where they come on. That's the, the quarter deck for the uh, National Flight Academy. What's great about this part right here is the, the, the primary entrance to the ship is actually open to the public. So the public can come and see and they can get a hint of what is going on inside, including viewing windows into our simulator bays, oh, which are, kind of are going to be quite uh, high tech, very, um, very amazing spaces to view because they are done like aircraft carrier space. Now this looks like it's aboard a ship. <laughs> the only difference between this stateroom and the ones that are actually on an aircraft carrier is these are a little bit bigger. This is living in luxury compared <laughs> to uh, on board a ship. Are the kids going to stay in those uh, racks? Is that what they you will. call yes, They sir. will. We are actually looking to use the actual furniture that's put aboard aircraft carriers today. So it'll be as real as we can get it. Okay, so that's going to be like a dormitory room mm -hmm. then. And then what do we have, a lecture hall and? No, no lectures, these will be mission briefings. Uh, what we are trying to do is completely immerse our young people and, and adults. We offer a wide range of programs, or we will. Uh, we intend to immerse them completely in this role-playing environment, this immersive visceral simulation. So all of their academics uh, will be presented as mission briefings where they're presented a challenge or a problem to solve using flight. They will be presented the academic tools that they need and then they will work in groups of squadrons and carrier air groups to uh, formulate a solution and then they will split and they will go fly that mission to see if their solution works or not. Great. So okay. the, the ready room is a fully electronic classroom. And what would this be? This space is called a JIC. Uh, there's a lot of acronyms involved. Remember, we are a ship. Um, <laughs> so this space is JIC, the Joint Intelligence Center. So once that squadron, those two squadrons of students are presented that challenge, they will then move to this space, and this is nothing more than a high-tech digital laboratory. The table in the center of the room is actually the centerpiece. That is a digitally interactive mission planning table. Uh, we are trying to stay completely away from paper charts. We will have a digital chart that can be manipulated by touch, our light scribe, and then that can be shared throughout the building and even sent down to the simulator to be presented as a moving map. So it's going to be a very high-tech uh, workspace. From there, those squadrons will split. One squadron comes to this space called the JOC, J-O-C, our Joint Operations Center. Here is a command and control coordination and communication space where we put the teens, the young adults, uh, the adults that attend our program, in charge of coordinating in real time with their sister squadron that is actually down in the simulators. Everything mm -hmm. is linked together. so. The students work from two ends, one from the flying side, actually in the aircraft that are linked together in a virtual environment, and on the other end, they're going to be in a control space where they can help uh, react to different issues that come up, weather, uh, fuel problems, maybe a change of mission. One of the things we talk about here is creating a learning experience rather than educational, and part of that is things like uh, critical thinking, uh, problem solving in real time. So we put, we put the participants in charge. We have facilitators that sit back and help them, um, but they actually execute from start to finish. One frame of reference you might say for this uh, National Flight Academy that people have probably heard about is in Huntsville, Alabama, the Space Camp. And it's been around for decades, and it has quite a quite a reputation, well known, I suppose, around the world because of movies and uh, other and shows that it's been in. Uh, is it going to be, uh, you, are, are you guys, are you shooting to be as good as Space Camp? 
we're uh, we're we're shooting to uh, at least equal, if not surpass, very very quickly. Um, you have to keep in mind that um, Space Camp started um, many many years ago in the very early 80s. This is a custom designed facility from the ground up. In fact, the technology buying decisions that we make uh, still haven't been made because we want to make sure that we have the latest and greatest for the facility when we open. So as a custom designed facility with this level of simulation, um, there is going to be nowhere else in the world that you can have this experience, literally. Um, we are going to no end to create this simulated role playing environment to the point where We've partnered with the same people that produce the exhibits in the museum, which are world class, um, will help us produce an aircraft carrier environment inside this building. And we've also teamed up with um, people from Hollywood, from Universal Studios particularly, that bring in those directors and those creative people and the lighting people and the sound people to put on what they consider as a show. It's a production uh, mixed in with a theme park ride from their standpoint. So. We take the best of the entertainment world, we take the best of the technology that we have out there, we take the best of the people that actually know how to fabricate and install all of this together, and what we're going to end up with is this very unique, just mind-blowing experience that is far going to surpass anything available right now. Well, it's ambitious, uh, that, that's for darn sure. And uh, I, I would add one thing, Lloyd, and that is, and all of those things, the, uh, the entertainment, and the simulation is all going to be wrapped around learning. Learning okay. is the center of uh, of our program there. That's what I that's what I was going to point out that maybe you saw just recently or you read that uh, the national the international tests were taken fourth and eighth graders and U.S. students do pretty poorly in math and science. And is the National Flight At uh, Academy going to try to take on? the challenge of uh, improving those, yeah. those grades. A absolutely, that's our cause. Um, Kevin can quote the numbers on these, but you're, you're absolutely correct. America's performance for our secondary students has been on a decline for many, many decades now uh, to where uh, you know, we're in the bottom half of nations in, uh, in some of these particular uh, uh, international testing. And, in, and when you take a look at our real competitors out there, the industrialized nations, we're in the bottom third in math and science performance. So how can we inspire young American students to get engaged in science, technology, engineering, and math, see its relevancy to the world that's out there, and who knows, maybe we'll turn the tide in getting science, technology, engineering, back, and math back in the root of our education program here in the country. Well, that would be great if it, if it would happen. How are you going to draw the, because you want it to be a national flight academy, not the Northwest Florida Flight Academy or the Southeastern United States Flight Academy. How are you going to bring in, uh, get, get the word out, bring kids in from Minnesota and uh, Oregon and all the places you want to, you, you want to draw from? to uh, make this I'd happen. like to lead off and then I'm going to turn this over uh, to Aaron sure. uh, on this one. Uh, we have a lot of partners. Uh, we have uh, university partners, University of West Florida, Pensacola Junior College, our Santa Rosa and Escambia uh, County Systems, Embry-Riddle University, Purdue University, University of Central Florida. We will continue to grow that university network, but we also have partners in industry, National Defense Industrial Association, Aerospace Industry Association. I did a presentation to them just a, uh, a couple weeks ago. So you're building this network. Building a network, uh, EAA, uh, the Experimental Aircraft Association, uh, 170,000 members, almost all of them own private civilian airplanes uh, scattered throughout the country where the National Flight Academy will become the science, technology, engineering, and math education program for EAA. EAA, oh, those are the Oshkosh guys. Uh, and EAA becomes yeah, the aviation, Oshkosh, in. Wisconsin. Okay. It's the biggest air show in the world. Right, right. Uh, the, uh, and, and EAA becomes the aviation and flight training program for the National Flight Academy. It's a perfect marriage. And there's other marriages that we will work with. And we also are working on a on a marketing campaign. Aaron uh, has been involved with the uh, development of a of a process to get some ideas 
from the uh, marketing world on how to penetrate out there nationally. Uh, Aaron, are you looking at, what do you do? Just look at seeing how Space Camp did it and then you're going to try to duplicate that or? Well, I, I don't think we're going to duplicate that, but but I think it's, uh, you know, we, we realize that the, the market for the National Flight Academy is 7th through 12th graders across the nation. So we have a great job. I mean, it, it's a huge job to be able to get that message out across the nation. And uh, we, we've just released an RFP, which is a request for a proposal uh, for marketing, uh, for a marketing campaign that would be a national marketing campaign, it would be to get the word out about the National Flight Academy across the nation. And we know that because of the market that we're talking about, it's seventh through twelfth graders, that you know we're talking about social media type of marketing. We're talking about things that are that are that are different than maybe a traditional uh, printing of a brochure or printing of a poster. Uh, you know, if we want to if we want to engage the the high tech youth that we're talking about wanting to be wanting to come to the National Flight Academy. We'll do it in different ways. And and right now what we're the, the great piece about this is that we're getting feedback from marketing firms across the nation who are very interested in what we're doing with the National Flight Academy, both on both for from their standpoint of being able to 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 get the business, but also from the standpoint of that they're interested also in the education side of what we're doing, the the, the science and math side. So uh, it, it, you know we have great opportunities with partners as the Admiral said our partners are going to allow us to to have the the in with so many more people that they've already they're already interested in. They do their own brochures already, their own marketing already that we'd be able to to uh, to tag on and complement. So again, the, the the marketing campaign is a huge piece of what we're about to do to yeah. attract those students. And this is not something you can't you can't get the whole facility built, get the simulators everything in, and then start marketing. Right. And I imagine this sure. is something that that you're going to have to start getting the word out nationally. And I know you're working on it now, but you got to start like yesterday on that, don't you? Our plan was a year and a half out to begin marketing to ensure that we have a, a full class of 264 students the first week that we start and, and uh, full classes throughout the first year. So that's what we're working on now. And you're trying to have a pretty uh, good student to instructor ratio, right? About what is that? Uh, that that's term? correct. Our, our staff to student ratio should never be uh, worse or lower than one to 11. We have the, what we call facilitators that will shadow squadrons of 11 student aviators, be them adults or corporate team training or actually uh, adolescents. Um, so they, they have a shadow, they have that guidance throughout the ship and throughout the mission planning and the mis mission execution phase. Um, there will be two of those facilitators during the day because we plan to go from early morning till late at night. This is going to be a very intense uh, experience that we want to provide. Um, we only have people for a limited amount of time and we're going to take advantage of every minute that we have there. Is this going to be a year-round operation? It, we will be open year-round and we will we will provide many more programs than just what we call our core program, our long program, which is our six-day, five-night program that's targeted at uh, young people grades 7 through 12. We'll have an inter intergenerational offering, which is a program over the weekends for families. Um, we're, we are looking right now very hard at, at uh, an adult-only camp because there is quite a demand uh, from our market uh, testing right now that adults would want to come to this uh, in terms of entertainment. Um, we will also offer a corporate team training package, uh, dedicated teacher team training, uh, and then we're looking at other things like with the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts or Sea Cadets. And the U.S. Navy actually has uh, expressed quite a large interest in what we're doing in terms of, in their mind, low-cost simulation to give all of the students, be them mechanics or, or air crew, our pilots or navigators that are waiting to start school in Pensacola. They're all here, they all start here. Um, the Navy's thinking, what a, what, what a better way to, to jumpstart their education in an aviation environment than putting them through our facility. Is right that kind here of a, base. Is, the, is the Navy relationship sort of delicate for you guys because you don't want to be seen as uh, a Navy uh, recruiting operation, do you? No, we, we are not Navy recruiters by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and, and in fact, let me tell you what that relationship is because I believe it's important for our viewers. The, uh, the United States Navy uh, does not endorse the National Flight Academy. However, nor have they provided any funding. That, that's very important. Uh, there are, is no taxpayer dollars going into the construction of the outfitting of the National Flight Academy. However, the National Flight Academy is allowed to exist because of an operational program agreement between myself, 
Captain Rasmussen, the uh, Commander Naval Training, and the Secretary of the Navy. The Secretary of the Navy has actually personally approved the construction and will accept the building, the National Flight Academy, the new uh, uh, construction program as a gift to the Navy. The Navy will actually own the building, uh, but uh, they do not endorse the program. They can't because it's a private foundation and that's just uh, the way the rules are. So uh, Navy doesn't endorse it, but it's right here on the Navy property. It's right next to our National Naval Aviation Museum, authorized to exist by the Secretary of the Navy and we are wonderful partners working together on this. The connection is really inescapable. Now, what about that location there on NAS Pensacola? Is that a, is that work in your favor, or would you would you? It's kind of late for that. Would you rather it was someplace <laughs> someplace else in the community? It's right where we want it. Uh, right next. We, we have uh, this year. We're going to come in at about seven hundred and sixty-five thousand visitors to the National Naval Aviation Museum. I have no doubt that we're going to be well over 800,000 next year. It's a great exhibit. It is the heart and the soul and the face of naval aviation. If our brand is naval aviation, then what a great place. Plus, for our students, they have the opportunity to see the IMAX movies, to watch the Blue Angels fly on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday mornings, meet the Blue Angels after uh, some of their practice shows. It's a perfect location. Okay, and uh, I wanted to ask you, you thought about what you're going to ask. What, what, what's the price going to be? Uh, have, you got a, have you thought about how many, I see Space Camp's about $1,000 a week. Uh, you guys That's can... correct. We, we, are, we are still uh, uh, in the midst of finishing up our market studies, and that's one of the issues that, we are, that is currently under review. We expect to be comparable, comparable to uh, the Space Camp Aviation Challenge offering. Okay. And that hovers between, depending on the program, 1000 to 1200 to 1250 somewhere in that neighborhood. Well, this is a spectacular project that you guys are involved in. I congratulate you, and it's going to be very exciting to watch and see how this comes along and come back and do another program when this thing is, get, is a little farther along. Uh, if you'd like to know more, the, we have the information right there, the nationalflightacademy.com. Uh, you know about the navalaviationmuseum.org. And NASA.gov has NASA Quest for kids, and then SpaceCamp.com is something you might want to take a look at and sort of maybe help get an idea of what they're striving to do. All they want to be better than Space Camp, though, they say. Uh, thank you very much, Admiral Hoeing and uh, our uh, Navy Lieutenant Commander King and Aaron. No titles in front of, no military <laughs> titles in front of that name. We're glad right. to have you here. Good luck with, uh, with you on your fundraising. And uh, let's keep this thing going along. Absolutely. It's a neat idea. Uh, thank you for watching CTC tonight. I'm Lloyd Patterson for WSRE. Good evening.